podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Chancellor Rosemary DiPaolo has been at the helm of UNC Wilmington since 2003. She will be stepping down from the post on June 30th. Chancellor DiPaolo recently stopped by our studio to talk about her tenure at UNCW and what the next chapter of her life will hold. Chancellor Rosemary DiPaolo, as always, welcome back to North Carolina Now. Thank you, Mitch. How would you describe UNC Wilmington? Well, we all call it, and you can ask anyone on campus, we all call it UNC Wonderful. And I think that's true, and it's wonderful for a variety of reasons. Uh, I can't imagine a better place to be, uh, what's not to love about it. Uh, the students are great, the faculty and staff are absolutely dedicated. We have a pretty good location uh, and an extraordinarily high quality of education. So it's just, it's just great. The kids would also describe it as laid back. And what they mean by that is uh, uh, there are no cliques, uh, people are accessible, it's got to be the friendliest campus in the universe. So that's how I describe it. You've been chancellor there since 2003, and now you've decided to step down. Why? It's time. Uh, I came back at the beginning of this year and realized that really we had achieved all of the goals that we as a campus had set out for ourselves eight years ago. Uh, and I just felt it was time for someone else to take it uh, to the next level, just as I think I had done. And it was ready for new energy, a new person, new ideas. And sometimes you're lucky enough to just know when it's time. You had initiated the seven strategic goals. What was the outcome of initiating those goals? Well, you know, it was the kind of strategic plan that did not sit on a shelf. On a shelf. We, we really lived by it. We tied the budget to it. Uh, we had pens uh, made with the goals on them, and I'd give tests on it to everyone. And, and so this became a living, a living document for people, the way we lived at UNCW. And, and we really achieved the goals. Uh, and now we were in the process of uh, uh, setting the goals for the next next decade and uh, the extension of that strategic plan and we were calling it Vision 2020 and I have no doubt that uh, Dr. Gary Miller, my uh, person who is lucky enough to be taking uh, the reins, will uh, follow that more or less and take it even further. Of the goals that you have achieved, tell me one that you're the most proud of. You know, I, I think they all went together. I, I, I can't separate them, but you know, they, the overarching goal was the first goal, and that was to create the most powerful learning experience possible. That's what we called it. And we've done that. Uh, what I'm most proud of is, is improving the quality of UNCW. It was a good school in 2003, a very, very good school, uh, but now it's a stellar school. Uh, we get extraordinary students from all over the state, from all over the country and beyond. Uh, and they know that they're going to get the highest quality education. Uh, that really is all about them as individual learners. You had talked about the budget earlier, and of course with UNC Wilmington being uh, under the state, what types of challenges have you faced as it pertains to the budget? It's been, it's been hard. Uh, you know, we've started out with a, a fairly low budget to begin with. We're very efficient in what we do. Um, but we've lost a lot of physicians, which means that everyone is taking on more work uh, of those lost positions. So they're doing more with a lot less. They haven't had raises in years, and I'm incredibly grateful to everyone at UNCW for the spirit which they've done this. But, but here's what really worries me about the upcoming cuts and on top of the cuts that we've had already, and that is and everyone knows this, you know, we're going to have larger classes, we're going to have fewer classes. I'm already being inundated with calls from parents saying, why can't my child get a class? But the real consequence of all of that is here we have North Carolina, arguably the best higher education system in the country. And it's going to spiral down so fast in public higher education. And I am my whole life has been in public higher education. I'm an advocate of it. I'm a first-generation college student. And it's eventually going to mean that really high-quality education 
is only available at private schools. And that is so sad because that kind of disparity really erodes American democracy. And I think as a state we have to think through, is that what we want? Not to just to put you on the spot, but what is it going to take to ensure that our universities and, and all, at all levels of education that, that we're prepared enough to comp compete in what they call that global economy? You know, we, we, have, to, we have to invest in education. Uh, and we have to make sure that we have the best teachers in the K-12 classrooms and that our students are ready to go to the community colleges and, and then on to the university system. Uh, that does take an investment. It's as simple as that. Um, and we need to make sure it's the highest quality. There's no sense in having mediocre education. Uh, and and it's, it's all very simple if you do the math. Uh, there's a, there's a point, a salary point, at which someone becomes a contributing citizen to the state rather than a net drain on the state's resources. And that figure is tied to educational attainment level. And it really is a cutoff of about an associate's degree. And you talked about education. And of course, uh, throughout, this, throughout several years, UNC Wilmington has been recognized nationally for you know, what it represents. How does that make you feel as chancellor? It makes me feel great. Uh, you know, when, when we're told by Forbes that we're 17th in the whole country in terms of being a, a best value, that's something that we're extraordinarily proud of. Uh, parents recognize it. Our students recognize it. Uh, they realize what they're getting for their money. And, of course, research is very important at UNC Wilmington. Talk about that a little bit. Now, there's something else we're tremendously proud of. We do much more research, research than almost any other comprehensive master's level university in the country. Uh, and it's all over campus. You know, of course, it's in the marine sciences because that's our, our, our great jewel in, in our crown. Uh, and uh, you, you all have done some stories on the research that we've done and on the uh, uh, antitoxin that our scientists found in red tide. That's a therapy for cystic fibrosis. But we're also doing great research in uh, uh, facial recognition for instance, where uh, uh, if I took a picture of you on my cell phone and I could give it to a Department of Defense database, they could tell if you are the same person that they looked at maybe 20 years ago by how, how faces age. So that's our computer scientists, our anthropologists, uh, working with our students on that. And, and one of the hallmarks at UNCW is we involve our students, our undergraduate students, in our research. You've also had a lot of construction going on at UNC Wilmington during your tenure. Talk about that. Uh, we basically transformed the entire campus. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, in the last four or five years alone, renovated or built about, about 22 new buildings, maybe more than that at this point. Uh, I think the thing that's changed the campus most is all of the new campus housing that was done uh, privately. Uh, and now the students are there 24-7, they're involved, uh, and that eventually leads to higher graduation and retention rates. So that's a great thing. It's exciting. Now let's talk about one building in particular. Now, although you're stepping down, there has been a <laughs> building named in your honor. Yes. And tell us about that building and just the connection of, of how much of you is into that particular building. Well, you know, I've been very fortunate in my career, and uh, as I said, I'm a first-generation college student, so to see your name on a building is, is extraordinarily overwhelming, and, and my trustees did this as a surprise, and uh, so it really, it was an immense surprise, and still is. I, I invent reasons every day to walk across campus and see that building, but it's our student services building which for me particularly means a great deal. It's where uh, students come for, um, for counseling and health and tutoring and all the, all the services that, that support student learning. And uh, I think the lettering on that building happens to be the most beautiful lettering on campus. So it's, it was, uh, uh, I'm very humbled by it, very honored by it, and it's meant a lot. You mentioned this earlier, Dr. Gary Miller has been selected as the next chancellor. 
any words of wisdom or advice to him? Well, you know, I, I had tea with our honor students recently, and just before Gary was named, and they looked at me and they said, you know, Chancellor, the, the next chancellor better get it. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And they said, it's about us. It's about the students. And we all know that everyone here has created an environment where we know it's about our learning and our development. So my advice to Gary is simply to, uh, to promote that, to enjoy our extraordinary students, and to continue to build on UNC Wonderful. I know he'll, have a, he'll do a great job and have a, have a great time. So what's next for you? Truly retirement. Uh, I, you know, I taught for, for years. I love teaching, but because I was out of it so long, um, I don't think uh, I'd be good enough in the classroom again to meet my own standards and, and my faculty standards. They're high. Uh, and so I will enjoy everything in life that being a chancellor doesn't allow you to enjoy. And, and you know, life has so many great riches. I feel tremendously fortunate to have had this and now to be going on to this next phase that, that we're so excited about to spend time with my husband. He hasn't seen a lot of me recently. Dr. Rosemary DePaulo, Chancellor of UNC Wilmington, congratulations on your retirement and thank you for your service to education and North Carolina and much continued success to you. Thank you so much, Mitch. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.